All right, we are about to witness two of the giants of the competition coming together. Iona College up against St. Pat's Mackay. Last year's final of St. Pat's Mackay. What a game that was up in Mackay at BB Prince Stadium. Michael Crutcher returns to the commentary box, mate. You haven't aged a bit. Oh, it's got cooler up here since I was last year, though. The, the breeze has picked up, and it's a bit cool this afternoon. But here we go, John. Confraternity Shield quarterfinals. They call it Heartbreak Tuesday at Confro every year. This is where the teams that really want to get to the semi finals and the final on Thursday and Friday, you've got to win this game to get there. Otherwise, tomorrow's the rest day. You still play Thursday and Friday, you're just not playing for that shield that you've really come here for two teams that were semi-finalists last year, as you mentioned, St. Pat's Mackay then went into the finals. But Iona College has been fantastic in this carnival. Coming off their rugby union season, they've had some really good wins and of course we know St. Pat's Mackay, they've been excellent. They're here. They've made it very clear they were disappointed not to win in front of their home crowd last year. They want to get back and get that shield for the first time in 20 years for St. Pat's Mackay, so this is going to be a great game. I can't believe I don't want to go too much into the past, but how big was that crowd at BB Prince Stadium for that final? Everybody was there, except my mother, I think. <laughs> it was a great crowd, great atmosphere, as we see Iona come this side, but Every conference has got a different feel. We know that. Charters Towers a few years ago. Bakai last year was fantastic. And its own feel here. The crowds have been great here. We've got a, a decent crowd to watch this Shield match as well. And we've got another quarter final happening over the other side as well. St. Brendan's are playing as we speak over there. So Pat's against there. against St. Augustine's oh. from Cairns. So we've got teams in these quarters from Brisbane, Mackay, Cairns, and Yapoon and two other matches that come after this. So they got to the kick there to Diana. Will Shears takes the tackle there of Pasco. Again up the middle. I mentioned some players, to, some players to watch here. Will Shears, as you just mentioned there, he's a Cowboys contracted player as the first penalty comes. Will Shears played last year, one of their 2022 team members and one of their highest profile players, but Interestingly, probably their two most high-profile players are down there, sitting there in their civvies because they're not playing this week because they're in the Queensland schools team that plays in the national titles at the end of this week. So Xavier Kerisk, Jackson Perdue, if you know those names, it's because they played in the grand final last year. They're in the Queensland schools team, can't play today, but still some very good players out there for St. Pat's Mackay. Surely they could do a fine cotton, <laughs> paint one of their legs white, the one green or something, nobody would know. Anyway, they're on the attack now here, I say Pats. Smith takes a tackle of his opposite 13 in William Lane. Hudson Clark, dummy half. Good shape out the back here. Will Shears goes back the other way. Will Shears almost gets through there. Great tackle there from Campbell Rolf. He's on his way to the chalk. Short ball to the prop forward and Shandlin. Sanderman on the last. They go to the left, short side, kick straight into the hands of the Iona player. So a very unordinary, or well, very ordinary end of the set of six, Michael. Yeah, Iona would be happy with how they were still oh, How about that? A decent shot to oh, start. Hudson Clark. Match. But Iona will be happy with what they did there. And the guy you've got to keep an eye on for with Iona is their captain, the number 13, Will Lane, at his third Confraternity Carnival. He played at Iona's own hosted carnival in 2021 as a winger. Now he's a uh, number 13, the leader of the forward pack as the ball spreads here. Oh, good ball. The other player like, from early yesterday was Levi Hawaii. Number seven for Iona. That's him with the ball now. Puts it high. Allowed to bounce. Don't know what's going on here. No swirling conditions, but they've really got to attack this footy. Fortuitously, it bounces in the hands there of Carter Harris. Already a good kick chase from Iona. Good yeah. signs and that effort. They'll need those effort areas here. The kick chase was good. Kick pressure. We'll keep an eye on how they go with that. But this is what we love about Confro. If you were trying to select a winner here, how do you put together a team like St. Pat's Mackay that has been undefeated in the Aaron Payne Cup so far? Beating Ignatius Park College up there. 
against Iona College coming off its rugby union season in the AIC comp. You can't do those form lines, so we're going to see it here right now. Tyler Sanderham gets over halfway. It's the last tackle there here for St. Pat's from Mackay. Fenland. Won't well, need this to bounce, otherwise they were in trouble. They're inside the 10. Well, good take there by Mohai. Under pressure, but he didn't know they were offside. Yeah, the kick taste was good from St. Pat's Mackay, just a fraction in front. But, you know, we speak about Confro and the, the memories it creates and just the people that it keeps bringing back and any of the NRL players who have played Confro before when we ask them if they can do something to send a message to the current players, they love doing it. They love talking about Confro. They ask which teams are going well and which aren't. Speaking of that, already bumped into a former St. Pat's McCoy captain, Grant Ravelli, played 100 NRL games. He's back to have a look at this game now. Of course, his father, Troy, coached successful teams there as well. So these players keep coming back. It's Confro gets in their blood and they keep a, an interest in it from year to year. Jack Leo, also strong yesterday in the game that was played here against St. Pat's Shorncliffe. Parkenham. Got a back line to the right here. A prop forward puts a grubber kick through through Jack Pascoe. Almost retrieves it, Jack Pascoe. Knocks it on. Well, it's a decent kick and chase there. It's not bad at all from the, the big number eight. I'm telling you, we're underrated us, front row. <laughs> got all the tricks. I could just imagine, would like imagine you doing this, John. Ball on the toe. Beautifully put on the toe, too, and sat up really well. University. Everything bar the regather, but a good effort there. So we'll keep an eye on the other quarter final at the moment because. That's happening on the field that is at the top of your screen. Brisbane so Broncos, if you can see the top of your screen, people looking Dolphins, the other way, NRL, they're watching the St. Brendan's, St. Augustine's match. And again, great to see St. Augustine's in the quarterfinals. The, the school that's won the, the carnival before, it's won a confraternity shield. So a bit of history at the moment. Nil all here, seven minutes gone. Yeah, the other field thinkers might be St. Pat's and Morris, I think. Yeah, St. Patrick's and Maris Jasgrave, two AIC rivals. So they're now in the Bob Linder Trophy group. So these top 16 Division 1 teams. Whoa, shot wow. Up. So the 16 Division 1 teams have now split into two. The top eight to fight for the Copper Trendy Shield. The bottom eight go for the Bob Linder Trophy. It's got its own prestige too. It's got a great list of winners over the years. And of course, the surprise in that one this year is Ignatius Park College, the two-time defending champions, missed the Confraternity Shield quarterfinals. So that's that's Confro footy. Yeah. Upsets happen. Chase is coming through into the sun. Oh, takes it nicely. Good grab. Bryce Hancock, take a bow, sir. Great history of footy for Iona as well, and only recently. Harrison Graham in the last week or two who played Confro for Iona made his NRL debut for the Dolphins. Of course Max Plath has played NRL this week as well. He didn't play Confro but Harrison Graham did and we know that Chris McKenna is coaching this team for Iona, the, the former Queensland Origin player stalwart centre St. Pat's Mackay, new coach this year Michael Comerford who took them to the grand final last year is coaching the Mackay Cutters now. Ian Skifalitti brother of Dean Skifalitti coaching St. Pat's Mackay this year. Puts it high in the air. There's Rolf. Swirling conditions. Will Shears takes that. And he takes the hit as well. So all the work to be done by St. Pat's to get out. Nil all as you'd expect a quarter final footy. A real arm wrestle. Penalty. A piggyback run here for St. Pat's. Or I should say relieving penalty. We're going to hear in our effects might you can hear the increased voices on the sideline there's a lot of enthusiasm for this match around any decision anytime the referee blows a whistle someone's happy and someone's not so you can feel that importance in this game here now the lungs there of costigan so if it's any relation to neville probably send a man Champion's been strong. He's had a break in, I don't think. Now with Jackson. No Driving still as Jackson. Has to be stopped there by Pasco. 
Stunt just walk on his way up Any the middle of field number one. Who may be missing their mouth guards. Three mouth guards have been returned from the laundry. Fens. If you are missing them, Fens drives them forward the again. They're area. getting some good field position. Options left and right here for St. Patrick and Mackay. Last tackle. Puts a kick into the corner, going backwards. Flies higher. Knocks it back into the field of play there, but great altitude there by Bailey Anderson. And they're as far away from the try line as you could possibly be, Iona. Yeah, we've gone 10 minutes already in this match, so a quarter of the way through, and we haven't had any points yet. So you can just see that intensity so far. Iona's really up for this. So they've come off that rugby union season. Hard to say how they're going to go at contract, but they've come together. Will Lane, who many thought might have actually been with the two St. Pat's Mackay guys and sidelined because he was picked in the Queensland team. He wasn't picked, but by all reports, he went very close in that. So he's out there as a beneficiary for Iona to lead that forward pack at his third contract. The defence is set here for St. Pat's. Iona, that's just past the 30 midline on the last tackle. Big left boot, drives that low and flat. And Anderson will run it back. Runs into the shoulder there of Joshua Cash. They're keeping the energy up here, Iona, and that chase was good. That is a bit too much energy there. These penalties, they don't want to give too many away in terms of just trying to keep field position and possession against the St. Pat's Mackay team that's got the advantage of having played already three Aaron Payne Cup matches before this. Just looked at uh, Chris McKenna get after that penalty's water. The ice man didn't flinch. No, they're, they're, they're very settled, these coaches. We saw Matt Guy before. His heart must have been pounding, but you would never have known the Merrimount coach. Yeah. Oh. What a game that was. Trying to strip the ball is Jack Pascoe. Doesn't get it. Jackson gets up. Finland. Try time. First points. Are they coming? Yes. They come in the way of Bailey Anderson. Outnumbered St. Pat's and they score on the right edge. Yeah, that try off the back of that penalty. And we mentioned needing to keep the field position and possession. They couldn't this time. And here they go. She is just with that cutout pass does a good job in the end to score that try as well Bailey Anderson with some cover trying to knock him off his course but that's an important try you think in this game on the other field at the moment St Brendan's are doing exactly what St Pat's Mackay are doing they're walking back from scoring a try so Iona just probably need to regather and they've got the quality they've got the size there too to get to the other end and try to put some pressure on St. Pat's Mackay. But just thinking of some of these other, we call it Heartbreak Tuesday, it's known as John, just over the years when you get to these games and you think teams are favourites and they get to Tuesday afternoon, this is the fourth game in two days, yeah. this is a uh, 40 minute game, so the equivalent of uh, you know two 80 minute games in the space of, of two days, we talk about you know, NRL players backing up after five days or whatever. These guys are playing 160 minutes of football across two days. They're young men. Takes a, a toll on them, and this is where fatigue really kicks in and where, of course, we talk about the player management, which these coaches do so well. So we've got squads of 21 players here. Each of these two squads is this kick is set there. Oh, another one hits the upright. Hits the upright. So each of these, as we watch this replay from the try. I just want to show you that yeah. Mo Hyde probably should have trusted his inside man. He comes in there. Should have trusted his inside man to make that tackle. Leaves a gap on the sideline. Good wingers try, but I'll look at those tape and they'll learn. So each of these squads are down one player. So you've got your 21. You can't fill in that 21. They get you through the week. Knock on. Oh, that's what Iona needed from the restart. So, so Pat McKay are down one player. So are Iona at the moment. So you get 20 players there and you can have unlimited changes. So there's a real art to try to get these squads through 
these days, these two days in particular. We saw yesterday Chris McKenna brought Will Lane off early in a uh, big win over St. Pat's College. I'm sure Will Lane wanted to stay out there, but these are the times when you start to manage that fatigue and try and keep as fresh as possible for right now. So I had an opportunity to hit straight back, five and a half remaining. Get all of St. Pat's good work undone. Hancock. Dummy half. Now is Maximus Sprague. Big body at the line there, Benavanetti. Benavanetti has been strong as this man, the number 13, going to the line is William Lane. He's close. Good tackle there from Concedini. Oh, it's a big gap. Trying to get through it close, it's pretty quick. Thought he's on his way to the chalk there, Rolf. Denied scrambling defence here from St. Pat's. Kicking it in goal. That's been touched. That should be play on. Six to go. Dart from Dummy Hart trying to get over there. No way through there for Sprague. Now, big body at the line. Benavinetti. Right for a second time in the set of six. Now they put it through the hands. They go wide. Hangs on to a long enough indecision. Loose the footy. Good shot there coming from Hunter Harris. Well, Hunter Harris has saved the day. Yeah, the St. Pat's Mackay defence withstood some of those runs in the middle as well. And they, we see here they end up going out to the right on the replay. Well, here's, this is where the winger comes in. Yeah, just needed almost the almost the flick, but very difficult to do. Looking into the sun there too, you got your those out right outside backs heading to the uh, left of the screen do have sun getting quite low in the sky at the moment. So Brendan scored a second try on the other field as well, John. So Brendan's has established a break over St Augustine's. Get past the 20. St. Pat's a 4 0 lead. Again, they try to rumble it up the middle. Carry here from Consadini. Off to the blind side. They go to that blind side. Their back rower there, and Jake Bryan gets over halfway. It's the last tackle now here for St. Pat's. Vence puts it high into the sun, knocks it on. That'll be a scrub feature. You've got to feel for Talon Cross right in the sun, swirling conditions. Yeah, we mentioned that sun's over there and definitely a factor for the guys in that corner of the field for now. Be a problem for St. Pat's McKay in the second half if. Iona can use that in their, in their factor, but a big chance here. We've got two and a half minutes to go. We've got a big right hand side stacked out here for St. Pat's Mackay. Well, they're about to score in the top right hand corner, Iona. Now they've got to defend their own line. She is. Over the top of him is Pereira. Blind side they go with Costigan. Good carry, Costigan's got good front. He's up quickly. They go to the blind side, sweeping around as Will Shears, and Shears will go back in, pop passes out of the back now to Howard Clark, and Clark, Clark for the try line. Just short. Another crash ball, reaches over, laying a style, no. Go back 10 metres and have another go. He must have been millimetres away trying to get that ball in after Will Shears was good enough to get the offload away and keep that play moving minute 40 to go here still a big chance for St. Pat's Mackay owner, desperate to defend Halves combining, long cut out ball to Shears Shears goes back the other way, the defence comes up on him right in front now it's the last tackle Fenlon goes back the other way, puts a little kick in there uh, oh, that's an effort there from, I think it might, might have been be Jake Pascoe, the number eight dive on that. Or something sweet in the afternoon. 
Good work for uh, Iona. Still that be available up here at the yeah, Brother Royal Centre Canteen. Work for Iona. They managed to hold that. We've got one minute to go exactly. So, um, but also, a you know, I think for some place, we're quite just a bit clunky an in attack at the moment. Some of those passes just behind where they should be, just not letting them get fluency in attack at the moment. So there's a couple of things they can sort out as Iona keep pressing up the middle through the cricket pitch. Away up. Just taken out on the last tackle. So that'll be change over with 30 seconds to go. Away are they? They sacked him as the quarterback almost. Yeah, dangerous. Uh, 20 seconds we have now here for uh, Iona. Jackson comes together with the opposite 16 and Doherty. They're down to 10 seconds on the ground clock. Correct. Skipping out of a couple of taxes, Jake Ryan. He gets the offload. Shears puts a kick in, does he? No. Gets a try to the corner. And Hunter Harris has scored right on half time. Oh, he has, and aren't they? The tries that just hurt so much, literally going over the line as the siren sounds there for an 8 0 lead. They've done so well, Iona. The kick pressure from St. Pat's Mackay back on that clearing kick was really good. Geez, good defence, good, good attack to press that off. Shears just finds his winger with enough depth, too. Just had enough depth, Hunter Harris to be able to hit that ball with just enough pace to get down a pretty skinny gap there and that is a really important try to go 8-0 with this kick on half time. Yeah, we'll have a look at the uh, replay after the kick but Harrison Constantine, 17, should have got anywhere near the trial and he stepped out of a tackle, promoted the footy to, to Shears. That's a good carry there from 17. He didn't care what time it was. It was time for a try. Yeah, and I thought they were getting to a position where uh, they may not have been able to get off a, uh, an attacking kick if they wanted to do that because they'd bumped out of some tackles, but it worked out really well. Well, let's go back to the effort of the defence from St. Pacifica's shot on Hawaii. Yeah. And, and change over on the 40. We mentioned that kick pressure is the uh, conversion... Wait, wait. misses for an 8 nil half-time lead but that's one of those things we keep talking about that the effort areas the kick chase and the kick pressure and it was that kick pressure then that got them the turnover in good field position and the try literally in the last play of that first half so 8 nil. there's a way for Iona to go but they're right in this game converted try and they're within touching distance as we see the highlights of this first half with the uh, two tries the first one you mentioned John just the compressed defence from Iona enabling the, the room for Shears to find his try score. And this is the last play of the, of the half. Here he, he goes. He's not quite down. There he goes. No one in to give a, a second hand to the tackle. And the, there's Harris with enough sp speed hitting that ball to score a try. This is a city where the sun shines all year, where we sing when we're winning, and we play without fear. This city is a family, and families stick together. We've always been in it to win it. This city never says never. Who has gone to restart this second half? Players still making their way back out in the middle of the middle of the field. Oh, crutch, we've got a bit of a wrap wrap around yeah. the ground as we wait for the restart. So we mentioned before, John, this is Div 1 teams playing at the moment in some of these fields. So 16 teams in Div 1 after the pool games, eight go up into the Confraternity Shield, which is what we're watching now. The bottom half go into the Bob Linda Trophy and play for that. So right now we've got the Shield quarterfinals. We've got St. Pat's Mackay 8 here over Iona Nillers. Play restarts on the other field, St. Brendan Japoon 10 leading St. Augustine's nil 
as St. Pat's McCoy regather that kick. Uh, and the Bob in the trophy, Marist Ashgrove 12 leading St. Pat's Shawncliffe nil. And we've got Rocky Grammar 8 leading St. Peter Claver, Riverview nil. Looks like we've got some defensive based games going on around the remaining four grounds. Two grounds have ceased for the day. And I think we do see that we have, you know, late in these games too these days I mean these teams are tired as well so we tend to have a few more mistakes a bit more fatigue uh, and we do have some pretty tight games so Darcy Clark over halfway it's the last tackle they toss the son of Iona again that's the S-U-N son allowed to bounce dangerous stuff oh, almost a regather there for Tenza Cantor they get the knock on Iona, so St. Pat's will get another crack at the line. Yeah, we've seen a few of these over the last two days. Balls that are just uh, bouncing and with the uncertainty of where they're going to, to go. Well, look, I'm not going to pick it. We don't have the bunker, but I'm pretty sure the majority of the St. Pat's players are inside the 10. <laughs> but anyway. Everything's easy with uh, TV replays. It is. The big chance here, we see they lined out a big right-hand side back line. Forwards combining the back line. Here's with the winger and Bailey Anderson. Bailey Anderson gets cut down on his way to the chalk. He's there for all money. Hoiking pass infield to Shears. Good tackle there from Fankenham. Crash ball, crash ball. Try time, the big fella, Darcy Clark. Crash is over, an error from Iona. And St. Pat's make them pay. They do, and, you know, we spoke in that end of uh, that first half. Turnover came from the kick mm. pressure. This time, turnover comes from a kick that bounces, and St. Pat's Mackay make the most of it. Darcy Clark getting the try there. We know that some of these some of these St. Patrick Mackay players, they bring the experience of last year. We've got Kane Smith about to convert this try. Kane Smith missed last year's home confro with an ACL injury. He's back this year, gets a chance to join his uh, teammates in trying to go one better than last year. St. Brendan's have scored again on the other field. The only thing that was stopping Darcy Clark was the goalpost. <laughs> yes, right. Big fella was on his way. They just didn't have enough numbers in front of him. And I still don't think they would have stopped him. Well, Darcy Clark missing a confro, we should say, last year with the, the knee injury. So Darcy Clark missed it last year. You can see the size. You can see the importance that he brings to the squad. Kane Smith with the conversion. He's a North Queensland Cowboys contracted player. He was part of last year's one, excuse me, on that as we watch this replay. Look at Clark, lines up like all good front rowers, get the ball. Tucked it under his wing, didn't he, mate? And crash over, so. Yeah. So Iona, down 14-0. They really need to score next. They do need to score next now, especially you can see the experience of Clark, Kane Smith in that middle. Smith takes the ball up again. You know they guys will just keep going forward in this second half. Rest day tomorrow as well. I'll tell you who they shut down. And I mentioned at the start that it was Levi Hawaii. So really been involved a couple of times. Unfortunately, one of those being a knock-on. But he's just... Or not, he's not knocked on. Didn't get the kick away. Yeah, and the big pressure here for... Iona, we've mentioned they come off their rugby union season straight away. They're into one of the toughest schoolboy comps around with four games in two days. What they've done so far, Iona, in this carnival has been fantastic. Some really good wins. And the first half, they will really be able to match that as they get this ball. They'll be looking for some type of movement down the field. But they've been excellent so far. They're down 14-0. There's 14 minutes to go in this half. But Confrey's produced so many interesting results. We've mentioned before St. Brendan's 18-0 at half time over Padua in the quarter final four years ago and didn't go through. Padua were able to come back so things can turn fast. Iona just looking to get back to their strength and get
get that field position, which they desperately need. Tui Tahiti. The, the plan they need is to go wide. Here's a bust here from Rolf. Touched by a St. Pat's player. That should be six to go. And there you go. He gets a call from the touchy. The touch judge on the spot there. And we these, had these Confro Shield games where we have... Campbell, right. touch judges yeah. and that knock on call from the touch judge well Hunter had us had to do it it's like he's on his way but what a run there from the 5'8 Campbell Rolf good chance here for Iona they've um, the winger out on the right hand side fed and one Aware of finds a back row and Jack Leo scored a try yesterday Leo driving with the legs gets hip tossed to the ground 11 out from the try line Iona they get a try they get a sniff they get a chance Clarkin there you're going to pronounce his name 75 different ways he's at the right way probably away here he is Rolf good carry Rolf gets close to stop by his opposite in Venn's Cash throws a dummy and Cash scores. Joshua Cash. He might be related to Johnny. And he's made that ball sing. Look at that. Yeah, the old dummy half dart over. The turtle. And I was just watching as we see the, the, the dummy just gets enough. And I was just watching Will Lane, the lock. As they were setting up for that play, the ball, Lane was two passes away and he was very vocal, moving players around. And if you're St. Pat's McCoy, you're defending your own line, you are probably looking very closely at what Will Lane is doing. Yeah, correct. That's and he a good had call, hands pointing around, he was yep. calling players around him, and Cash gets the ball, fakes the pass, and crashes over. Well, good magicians have nice distractions. They do. And they did that, and that was genius play. Could it be a coincidence or not? But May have looked at the feet of the markers and went, oh, hang on, they're going to they're take off here. Yeah, they were looking to get across to that right where Lane was set up pretty much directly in front of the posts. Important kick. Rolf puts it over the dot. 14 points to six. Have a look at this. This is just, yeah. Hello, Greg Kineski, for those of you who are old enough. Probably most people <laughs> watching don't know what I'm talking about. The turtle. And the little kid at the back there, he's happy in the black and white. He was very happy about that. A few Iona people here today, not far from their campus at all. Father Michael's here running around. He is here. I did see him before. They don't play without Father Michael Twig. So Iona. Let's see what this try does. And they're still down by eight. Try. Aware, they're going wide. I was going to say earlier they need to go wide. That's where their potency is against this big forward pack of St. Pat's. They've got to go around these big units. Start to pay them the expansive footy. They'll get the chocolates. Hawaii gives it off to the lock forward in William Lane. And William Lane, good post contact means, gets to the 40 metre line. With the halfback getting a bit of space there to, to move as well now, which is, is helping him. Cash to Rolf. Back here to Hancock. So it might have been the centre three quarter. It was Pereira, I beg your pardon. Good carry. This man, however. Tucker Hannum. Last tackle. Where's Rolf? Doesn't go to him. Goes to Hawaii. They're going to put it through their hands. They've got numbers out here. Takes on the line there, loses the footy unfortunately in the end there. There's Mohai and Mohai is going to have a changeover. And St. Pat's will be 15 metres out from their line. Yeah, they I are, thought it was the last. They are causing some some problems for St. Pat's Mackay out there on that St. Pat's right edge there. That speed they've got in that back line. But also the passes as well from the halfback from Hawaii. He's putting the ball beautifully out in front of his his backs and enabling them to hit that ball at pretty decent speed and have the ability to get around those St. Pat's Mackay defenders as they go short 
from the restart. Well, I could have sworn that was the last. Play. It was the last tackle. And should have just a change up. So whether there was a hand in there at some time from. I'm, yeah, well, I'm sure St. Pat's were happy to have a, a set play rather than just an ordinary play of the ball. But anyway, Iona need a good defensive set here. Getting in the way there was Jackson Wands. Well, I was just about to say the last thing they need. Yeah, the the Iceman down there. The discipline has to be important here for Iona. We've got eight and a half minutes to go. They're down by eight. They ben. really need to make the most of, of every chance they get. Bentley needs to find touch, does so. Good touch finder takes them to the 40. Now we know that St. Brendan's Yipun will be going through to the semi-finals there. It's starting to pull away from St. Augustine's and Cairns, so they'll be going through. St. Pat's were quite eight minutes away from going through with an eight-point lead, but we saw Iona score before. They can do it. So would St. Pat's take on Yipun? I'm just getting that confirmed Sorry. right now. Curiosity. Getting better on me. Stick with this one. Not over yet. Fens. Goes for it. This is ball carrier got in front. Plays in motion again. It's with the shears. 15 out from the try line. Iona, it's the last tackle. They go to the blind side. Puts a grubber kick in. Was it played at? Here we go. Break down the left hand side. This might be Pereira. Get up, quick play the ball. There's a lot of players offside here, but called out by the referee. Well played. And well called by the referee. Away with the footy. She is coming across in cover defence there before that stop that breakaway for St. Pat's. For, for Iona, sorry. Ben Benetu. Over halfway. Seven minutes remaining there behind by eight. Taking them. Good carry. Needs a good quick play the ball, but that's good stuff there from. Cohen Jackson to roll him onto his back, slow play the ball, defense is set again. They come up with a footy. Play on says the referee. Big moment. Six to go, says the referee. They're offside. Last thing needs is another piggyback penalty. Cash. Okay, Smith will get up just short of halfway. Ball back inside for the, the biggest number seven you'll see in Fennel. Half the defence penalised there, not straight. Or oh, a high shot, I beg your pardon. Geez, I don't know what you think about this. They're down 14 6, but they have given away far more penalties than St. Pat's Mackay have done. They've done a really good job considering that count at the moment and that's not being critical of the referee spotted penalties that he had to call so we mentioned fatigue when it gets to Tuesday afternoon and there's there's right. a fatigue one right there all right it's five and a half minutes ago they're down by eight points Iona College well it's simple they need to score in this set of six yeah there's there's your classic fatigue play right there just a bit of a look up just to see what's in front Go to the left hand side, Pereira, Wands. They've been dangerous when they spread it wide for left. This is a set play. They need to have bodies in motion, they need to have some pace. Easy to say after three and a half games of footy. Here they go through the hands. Pereira cut down, quick play the ball. They come back away, takes the line there. Easy target. They're going to drive him back. They've lost some meters, Iona. Again, they try and find their way through this wall, this tricolour wall. It's impregnable at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's aiming up at the moment. Lane, the carry beforehand. This is better. Getting some metres. A couple of tackles to go. Halfway line not crossed yet. They'll take that shot there, Will Fisher. Now it's the last on halfway. Four and a half to go. Awaya puts a kick. The chases need to be good. End over end, here's Pereira. 
doesn't make the tackle, but his teammate to the left does. So they're 10 minutes out from the try line. They don't need to force an error. Good chase from my own there too. They're still really digging deep here for their teammates. And, you know, we say it, John, this is not representative football. It's school football. You're playing with your mates. It's such a unique format, and it gets to finishes like this, and you just see the way these guys dig for each other. They've been together many, many years at school, some of these guys. And there's probably nothing better to get you rolling than those friendships in these times of the game. And then you come back afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> many years. That's right. A little bit less fit than when you played Confro. Yeah, Last pro tackle. Oh, no! Last tackle penalty goes against Benavanetu. Yeah, that ruck's just been messy for Iona, has it? That's another penalty there, just uh, just from the ruck with uh, the chance to try and get the ball from a, a kick, maybe. But now St. Pat's Mackay, three minutes away here from another semi-final berth. Now, the winner of this game will play the winner of the next game. Emmaus College Rockhampton undefeated winners over Ignatius Park earlier today against Shalom College Bundaberg. So the winner of this game, either Emmaus Rockhampton or Shalom Bundaberg in Thursday's semi final. Just under three to go. St. Pat's on the attack, trying to put this one to bed. She is. Here's a chance for the winger and Anderson. And Anderson, Anderson, Anderson scores. Puts the contest to bed. And St. Pat's Mackay will win this one, maybe comprehensively in the end, with two and a half minutes to go. Yeah, they'll win the game and they've made the most of well, their opportunities in this game. That's what it's come down to. This comes with the back of another penalty conceded by Iona. And they've been good at this, St. Pat's Mackay. They've had opportunities. They've made the most when they've come down the field. As we see the ball going out to Anderson, who's got some speed there. Got some strength too, look at that. Good enough to take on the defence at the end and get the ball down. And that's a good win for St. Pat's Mackay. They'll know they've got things they can work on before Thursday. Emmaus College, Rockhampton or Shalom awaits them on Thursday. You know, Emmaus College is the talk of Div 1 at the moment. They put the two-time defending champions, Ignatius Park College, Townsville away 16-0 this morning. They kept their line intact. It's been a long time at Confro since Iggy Park's been held scoreless. They were today. Emmaus went through undefeated in their pool games. And then Shalom, coached by Antonio Cafusi, the former veteran NRL player. He's got his team into the top eight. That's a real achievement for Shalom College. But they come to these games, and we'll see this game next. Who knows what happens on Tuesday afternoon. So St. Pat's Mackay are in their quest to win the Shield for the first time in 20 years is alive and they'll be happy about getting there on Thursday as this kick waved away doesn't that get will there. be well, it was 45 seconds to go yeah well they'll try to go one better than last year have a little replay here this is good work here from Shears draws a lot of defenders they thought he was going to go all the way to the try line Gets the offload and slams it down. Little tiny Gronk spike at the back end. <laughs> Happy can, man is Mr. Anderson. You can see how important Will Shears is to the St. Yeah. Pat's Mackay team, but they've got good players in, in key positions in this team, and they'll be good to watch again on Thursday afternoon. But Iona, with 15 seconds to go, Iona should be really proud of what it's done so far. Iona getting ready as well for the AIC Rugby League competition, which starts in a couple of weeks when Term 3 comes back. St. Pat's to roll it out. This will be the last play. And there you have it, full time. 18 points to six. St. Pat's winners over eight. Owner College. We'll take a break here. Final game coming up shortly. And that will be between Emmaus College and Shalom College of Bundaberg. Back shortly.